Seem familiar to you? Yeah, it does to me too. But is it actually worth it? Are there any benefits to fasted training, according to the latest research? We're going to go over that in this video, and I'm going to give you the lowdown on fasted training, including the most important nutrition aspect that most people aren't aware of. So I'm going to enjoy my coffee, and then we'll get to it. So what's up nutrition nerds and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about fasted training. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's James and I talk you through all things related to nutrition and triathlon. If you are new and that sounds interesting to you, then you can click the subscribe button to stay up to date with everything that I release. So as usual here at Nutrition Triathlon, let's go over a little bit of the science just to give you some context and background information. Now, if you don't want to listen to the science part, you can just skip ahead in the play bar and I've put some chapters there for you. But before you do skip ahead, it might be worth you listening to this one because there's some really important information that we go over. Maybe have a listen and then let me know in the comments section if you already knew this already or whether it was completely new to you. All right, so let's start with the theory behind fasted training in relation to endurance exercise performance. The idea behind it is that we get better at using fat as a fuel source and therefore we're less reliant on carbohydrates. In terms of exercise, we've got essentially an unlimited amount of fat to use as energy. So if we can tap into that, then we could massively improve our performance. But what actually is fasted training? Now that might sound a bit of an obvious question to you, but it's crucial to understand it. As the name suggests, this means training in a fasted state. So having not eaten in the hours before you exercise. This might be after sleeping, after something like intermittent fasting, or during an event like Ramadan. But what does it actually mean? How does it differ when we train fasted versus after food? And how does it affect athletes? The first thing we've got to mention is glycogen and glycogen is our body's store of carbohydrates, specifically glucose. And we store most of it in our liver and our muscle cells. The cells in our body use these glycogen stores throughout the day for normal activities and when we exercise. We top up our glycogen stores through eating. So it's a constant cycle of use and restore. In a fasted state, we still use up these stores, we just don't replenish them and the lower these stores run, the less carbohydrate is available. So the more we have to rely on non-carbohydrate sources to provide energy, and fat being the main one. So when we think about it now, the concept is really easy. By fasting, our carb stores are lower, so we force our body to use fat and get better at it. But this brings us to the most important point. In a fasted state like this, it's specifically our liver glycogen stores that get used up. Our muscle glycogen stores are relatively untouched. This is due to our liver being the main contributor to regulating the level of sugar in our blood, otherwise known as our blood sugar, and providing sugar to other cells in our body. So our liver glycogen stores run low, but our muscle glycogen stores are actually fine. Yet it's the muscle cells where we actually want the improvements to take place because this is what drives performance adaptations. And this is why it's so important to understand the mechanism behind fasted training before we go into the practical application because otherwise it won't make sense. And if you actually understand the concept, then you can use it in your own training and know why. Perfect. All right, so what does the research say about this kind of training? There are quite a few studies out there and there are now some meta-analyses which is basically pooling all of the data from other studies together to get a big result. And those are helping to give more information as well. 
If you are interested, then you can read them for yourself. But as an overview of the evidence into fasted training and endurance performance, anywhere between weakly positive to strongly negative. It seems that the research doesn't particularly favor fasted training as a tool to improve endurance exercise performance. And in a few studies, it seems to worsen performance. But there may be quite a few reasons why this is the case. So it may be that the studies looking at fasted training don't have ideal setups. So they might not be long enough, be rigorous enough, or have enough participants to show a benefit from fasted training. So it may be that the benefit is actually there, it's just not shown in the studies that we have. But it also just might not be beneficial overall. Regardless, evidence is not that favorable. But does it mean that you should completely ditch fasted training from your training? I don't think so. I think that it can and probably should have a place in a training schedule, as long as you follow some basic guidelines. So as we mentioned, the idea behind fasted training is to improve your ability to use fat. If you've listened to my stuff before, you'll know that as we work harder, we shift away from using fat as a fuel source. And when we're working really hard, we don't use any fat, we only use carbohydrates. So if you do high intensity exercise, when you're aiming to improve your body's ability to use fat, you've missed the point. Keep your fasted sessions easy. We're talking easy enough to be able to breathe fully in and out through your mouth and be able to have a full conversation. If you aren't able to do that, then you're very likely out of the zone that your body is best able to use fat as a fuel source. Fasted training by nature is harder on your body and it feels harder too. And we know that because there are plenty of studies that show that the perceived exertion of the same exercise when fasted is harder. If we remind ourselves of the aim of fasted training, it's to improve our ability to use fat. And essentially, we're trying to build a big aerobic base. But competition time is time to be at your best. We know that fasted training is harder on our body and we're not going to be able to train as hard or with as high intensity as we would like and your body will be under more stress. I think keeping fasted training primarily to your off season and away from your competitive races is sensible. And as you come into your race season, you should make sure that your training is more specific to your event and that you're practicing the nutrition that you will use. So let's face it, sometimes it just works. You don't want to eat super early or you haven't got the time or maybe you just like training in a fasted state. And I think that's fine. But given those things that we know, that it's harder on your body mentally and physically, and that you can't perform high intensity as well, don't make it an everyday thing. If you keep to this guidance, I think this will give you a good balance in your training. Working on your overall fitness and making sure that you don't compromise the quality of your hard sessions and importantly, reducing the chance of injury, illness, and burnout. Now, all of this is in relation to fasted training in the classic sense, simply not eating from one period to another and then exercising. And as we've said, the evidence suggests that it's probably not that helpful, but take from that what you will. However, there's a twist to this fasted training that we could consider, something called train high, sleep low. This method aims to deplete muscle glycogen stores, not liver glycogen stores, before training. I'm gonna cover that in a video soon, and I would say it's one that's really worth watching. Of course, I would say that though. If you'd like to, you can go and read into that yourself, but otherwise, I'll be doing a video on it soon. And if you haven't already, press subscribe and make sure you press the bell icon to stay up to date with everything that I release. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you liked it and I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you did know that difference already or whether what I've told you is completely new to you. And importantly, are you gonna continue with your black coffee in the morning and your fasted training? I probably will. And I'll catch you next time. See ya.